Welcome to my channel, Sunshine Shoulders. I'm Calvin. Thank you so much for stopping by today. I've got a very, very special interview. An 87 year old playboy in the Philippines with over 2,000 women. But before I get started, let me welcome our viewers and subscribers. Thank you so much for your kindness, your generosity, and your support of my channel. It's truly been amazing. I'll never take that for granted. I'll just give you a little context. Sydney is one of my subscribers, and we kind of hit it off in, uh, from the beginning. He, he's a philanthropist. He likes helping people like I do. But I'm going to interview him and just let him talk to you because this guy has just an amazing life. Like I said, he's 87 years old. And by the end of this interview, you're not going to believe it. He sings, dances, plays the harmonica. He's been with over 2,000 women. In his life. So I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Sidney Gibson. Just go ahead and briefly introduce yourself. And to yes, my, my name is Sidney Gibson. I'm from Trinidad and Tobago initially. Came to the U.S. to further studies in engineering and architecture. Um, I graduated in 1964 in engineering, and uh, my first job was the company of Musa Rutledge, Wentworth, and Johnson, who sponsored me so I can remain in the United States. Oh, wow. Now, throughout your career, was there any famous monuments or buildings that you worked on or were a part well, of the team or anything? Well, that firm worked on everything. We did. They were basically foundation consulting engineers, heavy foundations. Yeah. And they also, did, they also had a marine structural division. They also did bridges, roads. Yeah. And and buildings. Now, I, mean, they, I worked for them for seven years. Seven years. And then yeah. you went on, the, on your own. Business. I went on to own my own business because yeah. at that time <clears throat> I got involved with the Urban Coalition. Yeah. And that's where I met Reginald Lewis and Fred Wallace. Oh, wow. You see, those are big giants. Yes, they are. At the time, Reginald Lewis died in 1993. He may have been the richest black man in America. Yeah, yes, exactly. If not, he was in the top three. Yeah. Well, he purchased, sure he purchased Glamour Magazine earlier, and then he used Glamour Magazine to leverage the purchase of Beatrice Foods. Yeah, Beatrice. I remember that. That yeah. was big, big news. Yeah. Now, not only were you a civil engineer and architect, but you are also a pretty good calypso singer. Oh yeah, well, I mean, I started singing really from the age of six. I used to go to Radio Trinidad on every Tuesday at 11 o'clock to sing um, on, the, on the show they call People Who Think They Can Sing. Oh wow, that was before American Idol. Oh, way, way before, way, way before. I'm talking <laughs> years before, yeah. Yeah, and so you, did you meet anybody famous? Well, yeah, there are many of us who turned out to be very famous, like, for instance, um, Francisco Slinger. He's now the mighty sparrow, yeah. the, world's, the world's premier Calypso king. And, you know, Mario Toppin. Yeah. So, you know, it's just, these, we all grew up from an early age singing, and we aspired into performance. Yeah, Henry Belafonte was a pretty good Calypso singer, right? Yeah, but we don't consider him a Calypso oh, okay. singer. Well, we consider him a Goombe folk song singer. Oh, okay. But when he came to the U.S. in 1950, he took the he took the U.S. by storm. Oh, yeah, they never heard of anything like, like that, that or saw anything like that. Yeah. He was a pretty charismatic guy. Yeah. But then when I came to the U.S. in 1960, I saw a poster for a Calypso King show, and I said, "Holy Christ! I got to be on that. I got to get into that." <laughs> So I saw a name and a number, and I called up this guy, Lester Isaacs, and I said, Mr. Isaacs, I want to be on that show. He said, who are you? I said, I'm the mighty confuser from Trinidad and Tobago. Wow. He never heard of me. The but mighty confuser. Right, from Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. So he said, well, if you can sell 50 tickets, you're on the show. Mm -hmm. So the people I was staying with, the wife was a nurse. I went back, I told him, she said, sure, I can sell 50 tickets in no time. Yeah. So he sent me the 50 tickets, we sold them, and I got on the show, and I won that show. Oh, wow. Yeah, we had that show with Lord Nelson, King Wood, um, a couple guys from uh, Antigua, Barbuda, and, and some of the Caribbean islands. 
but Lord Nelson was there as well, and uh, so I won that show in New York City. Why don't you do us a favor and hit a, hit a few bars? I'm gonna set the camera up. I know you say you like to stand up. I gotta stand and sing. Okay, I well, go ahead, because I want y'all to hear singers. him. He's a legitimate entertainer, guys. I promise you. Go ahead. I am going to do a calypso by the mighty spoiler. Okay. Entitled Bedbug. Bedbug. Well, yes, I heard when you die after burial, you have to come back as some insect or animal. And yes, I heard when you die after burial, you got to come back as some insect or animal. Well, if it's so, I don't want to be a monkey. Neither a horse, a goat, a donkey. My brother asked the devil to turn in my hog, not me. I want to be a bed bug. So I could bite them young ladies' partner. Just like a hot dog or a hamburger. And if you know your tin, don't be in a fright. It's only big fat women I going to bite. Oh, man. <laughs> wait, 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 wait before you sit down. Yeah. Give us a few steps, man. He's got a, a dancer, too. 87, guys. Eat your heart out. Now, your tour guide told me that you play the harmonica. Yeah, I do. You want to hit a few bars of that? Oh, yeah. Before you so sit down? I Which will, one? I will use this one. Okay. This, is, this, is this guy's name. an all-around entertainer. This I see why the ladies like you. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever go out on tour? Oh, yeah. We toured we walked the Canada and other places very yeah. much, but I had to make a decision. Either I want to stick to my profession or be a full-blown full entertainer, and I decided yeah. to stick to my profession. Yeah, because I'm going to ask you some questions about that when you sit down. Yeah. Oh, you can sit down and play that. Yeah, I can sit down and play that. Oh, yeah, okay. oh, yeah. I can sit Let's get back clo up close and personal again. Put you in my hall of fame not because you're 87 but he's a dancer singer harmonica player and a playboy let, let me <laughs> give you let me tell you all this story about sydney you know i go with merlin he sung happy birthday just happy birthday to merlin's mother and she fell in love didn't she yeah she, she did she did it's and she hasn't been the same ever since taking selfies <laughs> yeah <on> facebook yes <laughs> <laughs> sydney this is funny, man. I mean, by the way, you owe me a housekeeper because she fell in love with you and she moved and she out. Moved up. <laughs> she <fell> job. <laughs> That's funny. But, yeah, funny, but That's I want to ask you about the music industry yeah. back then. Yeah. Because you had said something about that's why you got out because you had did some songs or well, something. I, did, yeah, yeah, I got out of the music business because um, the corruption in the, in the recording industry. I, I made a couple records for um, a couple of labels, never got paid for it. But wow. what really got to me was when I did a commercial for BWIA Airlines, which, is the, which at the time was the airlines for Trinidad and Tobago government. And my agent, Lester Isaacs, called me and said, BWIA wants you to do a commercial for them. Yeah. And I said, okay, go to Crompton Studios and do it. Crompton Studios happened to be like four blocks from where I was working in the engineering office. So I went up there, did the recording, and we were supposed to come back in front of the camera December 15th. To do a video. To do a video, yeah. December 15th came and left, nothing. I called up last day, so let me call them and find out. They say, well, BWI said they don't want to do the video anymore. Well, like three weeks later, one of the secretaries in the office came running to me, Sydney, Sydney, I heard you singing on the radio this morning about some airline. I said, what? 
She said, yeah. I said, no. She said, yes, you. I know your voice. It's you on this airline. And I didn't pay much attention to it. But when I went home in June of that year, my brother told me they've been playing that commercial on the radio for quite some time. I never got paid. And then I decided, you know something? That's when I'm going to stop this business. So in 68, I stopped. I gave my guitar to my second son. I said, this is yours. And I stopped the business. And that was it. Yeah, I got out of it. Yeah. And what's the money in uh, Tobago? Is it's, it dollars. Dollar? it's dollars. It's dollars. It actually, it is seven to one right now. One yeah. US dollar is worth seven trillion dollars. Let me ask you something. Did you play cricket? Because cricket is pretty well, big. Cricket oh, and yeah. soccer, yeah, everybody in the place, that was the game. You Basketball played. was almost unheard of in Trinidad to me. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody played cricket and soccer. So you, even today. Yeah. yeah, and see, that's why I try to tell my kids, if they think that, oh, if you're not a big star in the, in the United States, you're not a star. Oh, 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 tell oh, them about yeah. some of them, how big some of them cricket stars oh, are. I mean, you even have today. Gar even today, you have Garfield Sobers. You know, you have, what was this guy's name? No, the biggest Michael Jordan. Oh, right? bigger than Michael Jordan. When yeah. you go to India, New Zealand, Australia, you're talking cricket. That's yeah. the cricketing countries of the world. And the West Indies have a cricket team that's made up of the majority of the players from, from the islands like Trinidad, Tobago, Barbados, Jamaica, Guyana. Even though Guyana is not in the West Indies, it's considered right. part of that. So you have that team back in the... 50s, the West Indies were the best cricketing team in the world for many years because at that time the team had three top batsmen. They called them the terrible W's, Weeks, <laughs> Warren, and Walker. When those guys get into bat, it's lit lights out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you something about you said you were married. You were married before. How many times were you married? Twice. So your first marriage. My first marriage was really to my childhood sweetheart. We married. Yeah. That's the mother of my four kids. Four kids. Yeah. And, but you were touring when you were married to her. Well, how how well, did she well, take that you having all these women? Well, the, the thing is, it's a different mindset. Yeah. Because the women in the islands, they understand if you're doing a certain thing, that you're going to be away from them and you're going to be doing it. And they know when you when you leave them. Even without being a uh, a well known artist, yeah. you're gonna have a lot of women in your life. Yeah. So they 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 settle with that. Yeah, it's so, not it's not a big problem for them. So and you attribute a lot of sex sexual activity as part of your longevity. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure, absolutely. Is there any scientific? Yeah, well, I, I don't just, know. I have never, I have never tried to see if there was any scientific information regarding yeah. that. But I can tell you, you see, sex is exercise. Yeah, your whole body exercises when you're having sex, and this is an adult channel, right? So, yeah, yes, it does. So channel, I hope yeah. people don't get offended. No, no, they're not. But um, you know, sexual activity is like exercise, and in the Caribbean, as I know. When people have sex, they have sex for hours. It's not for five, oh, six wow. minutes. It's for hours. Wow. So when you finish, you're sweating, you're tired, you lie down, you start again. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. obviously, you've got good genetics, too. Yes, for sure. How my, was your mother involved? My, my mother passed away when she was at the age of 98. 98? Yeah, but my mother looked as if she was 70. Yeah. And... She was in good health. She just called my brother one day and said, you know something? I want to go home. Yeah. And my brother called me. And I said, what do you mean she wants to go home? She is home. He said, no, he means the other home. Oh, wow. And I said, well, what's wrong? He says, nothing. She just got up and said she wants to go home. And from that mo moment on, she told him what to give away and what, and what to give to who. And then she began to deteriorate. Just like that. So you got a brother. Yeah. How yeah. old is he? He's 82. 82. Yeah. Your, your little brother. He's, he's younger than I am. <laughs> <laughs> 82. 82. Yeah, if you, see, if, you see him, if you see him, you think he's 65. <laughs> yeah. So I did the short with you and showing you dance. Remember when we were in Bataan? Yes. And you Bataan. got to dance. Yes. Everybody couldn't believe you were 87. Well, I said, I mean, I, he can you have to, well, I mean, I started dancing, and that was the thing back then before we had no television. 
We used to go under the street lights, the guys in the, in the area, and just dance under the street lights. Yeah. And we would dance all tango, you know, all type foxtrot, all type of walls, all kind of dancing yeah. under the under the street light. So when you go to a dance hall, you have some moves, you see. We always have some moves and we're we standing hall. on the wall. Uh, yeah, we don't stand against the wall. No, we yeah. walk up to the ladies. Yeah. Would you like to dance? And you go and yeah, you do your thing. <laughs> I met my wife, my second wife, while dancing. Yes. I was dancing at this nightclub called the Apple Tree in Washington, D.C. And she was looking at me. And I said, oh, well, if she keeps sailing, I'm going to dance with her. Not mm -hmm. knowing who she was or where she was. And we started dancing and that turned into an affair. Yeah. yeah, yeah. See, that's what I was telling you today. We were having lunch. I said, Sydney, you're going to do well over here. Because Sydney's not afraid of the ladies. No, no, He's no. suave. He's like a Rico Suave. <laughs> he knows that the sage on. He reminds me of John in that. <laughs> now, is this your first time coming to the Philippines? Yes, it is. Yes, Very it is. first time. Very first time. But yeah. you've been to Asia before. Oh, been to Asia before. We travel the world basically, all through yeah. South America, the islands. And to me, the Philippines is nothing more than another island. To me, uh, yeah, the, the, temp the weather, the temperature, everything, yeah. the, the poverty, the, the beaches, the yeah. food, the, you know, the, the, very similar. I mean, I'm like I'm at home right now. Yeah. But in a nutshell, to put it in a nutshell, though, you came here to help people. To help people. You Absolutely. didn't come here for a woman. No, no, no. That's not in my cards. Yeah. No. But if I meet have one, you met any? Yet? No, well, not really. Yeah, but but if I meet yeah. one, who knows? Yeah. I would, I would probably play the game. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't think they're used to going at it for hours, though. Well, they will you, learn. They will have to yeah. learn. They will have to you learn. You're a pretty good mechanic. They will have to learn. Take well, going. talking about a good mechanic, I wrote a song. That won me a competition in Trinidad in the East St. George Division mm -hmm. for the taxi driver. The taxi driver. The taxi driver. And I won that competition with that song. Yeah. And it was pretty popular. You want to hear? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Y'all getting a free concert, by the way, guys. This you, is have, free. you have to understand the whole thing about Calypso. Calypso, there's something called Jocular Calypso. Yeah. And that means this Calypso has two, it could be two, it could be two different types. In other words, the lyrics may say one thing, but the meaning is totally different. Okay, okay. And every time it always has to do with sex. Okay. So even though if I say I'm in a car, that car could be a woman. Oh, uh, okay. You see yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. double if, meaning. It, double meaning, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so let me give yeah. you a, let me give you that. An Indian woman want a taxi driver. So she publish it in the paper. An Indian woman want a taxi driver. So she publish it in the paper. I sent in my application to this Indian woman. She find I was small, but here the rake. As I started to drive, the front axle break. The motor was in low, so I push in high. The Indian woman started to cry. She bawled out, no. Driver, no, take all the high gear and come back in the room. <laughs> yeah, I like that one, Teddy. Yeah, so that, yeah, that was your now, Was that a hit for you? That then? was a hit, but the thing about that, you know, that's a double meaning calypso. Yeah. You know, it, I'm driving a car, mm -hmm. but all of the everything else is actually yeah. having sex with a yeah. woman. That's what it is. You put it in high and low. High and low. Yeah. High mean yeah. the front axle brake yeah. is the front. Yeah. <laughs> and as soon as it went in, it brake. And it was so big and hard, she take it out and put it in low. Yeah. You get it done. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that's the kind of thing. I mean, it's all jumping up to its toes. And we have many like that. But, I mean, you know. Well, you know, another reason why me and you kind of click because... You and your wife had started a foundation before she passed. Yes. I know you were telling me, Sydney's wife passed. But anybody out there still with this foolishness about COVID's not real, yeah. it's a slap in this man's yeah. face. Yeah. How long were you married? 40 years. 40 years. His wife, 40 years, yes. passed 40 away. Years. What when she passed? May? May, May? May? June 25th, 2020. June 25, 2020. Yes. His wife died of COVID. Uh, but y'all still have a foundation to help. Yes. To help, you know, to help young kids who have, who have, you know, suffering with life-threatening illnesses. Yeah. And who are hospitalized. And we focus on basically three hospitals yeah. that attend to, to children 
and will give them all the health care without the parents having to pay for it. Good. That was important yeah. for us. Yeah. So we focused on St. Jude's Hospital, the Shriners Hospital, Children's Hospital for Cancer Research. Mm -hmm. Those are the organizations that we feel we should help who yeah. are helping other kids and poor families from the exorbitant bill medical course in the U.S. Yeah. So that's kind of where our, our, so our you, goal is. You've done quite well for yourself, obviously. Yeah, we now, did, did yeah. you earn that money working for somebody else or you had your own no, business? No, no, no. I had my own business and I will tell, I always tell people this. You can, you can work for other companies, but you're only working to put food on the table and to pay your rent or whatever. To make money, you have to be in business for yourself. If you're not in business for yourself, you will never have financial freedom. That's a guarantee. Yeah. Yeah. No question about that. And and you got financial freedom now. Oh yeah, we do. You sure. can go anywhere you want. I can go anywhere I want. I can buy anything I want. I don't have any debt. I am debt free. I have credit cards because I have to use them and many places you go, you can give people cash they want a credit yeah. card. But if my credit card bill is $1,000, I pay it off on the bill coming full. Wow. I don't pay the minimum payment and all yeah. that. You start doing that, you head in the wrong direction. But you don't have a Rolls Royce. I don't want a Rolls Royce. Yeah. I, I look at investing in things that appreciate. Yeah. And I invest in products that produces something. Yeah. I know a lot of people now talking about Bitcoin. And I follow Warren Buffett. Whatever he says is what I do. And he should know because yeah. he's a billionaire 400 times over. Yeah. And if he says Bitcoin is a bad investment property, I am not investing in Bitcoin because, like he says, if it doesn't produce something, it's, 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 it's a fad. Yeah. It's going to fail just now. Eventually. Yeah. Eventually, yeah. yeah. So you came to the Philippines to help people. Really. To help people. You didn't come yes. over to... To be a taxi driver. Oh, no, no. <laughs> no, I'm not going to work. I, I, yeah. I retired in 2007, and I don't intend to work for anyone or even I myself. Mean, I mean, anymore. with the women, you're not going to put it in high gear oh, well, and I mean, break that. If, 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 it, if it comes, I would take it. <laughs> I don't back down from that. I wouldn't back down from that, but I'm not here to look for that. Yeah. Right know? now, as of this viewing, 2,263 women. In my Who's lifetime? going to be 2,264? Well, maybe in the 65 could be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One is never enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I get a nice woman, sure, why not? How about yeah. the time? Yeah. Well, good, man. Yeah. Well, thank but you. But you know, to be honest with you, Calvin, um, I, I don't like to abuse women. Yeah. And if I find someone who, you know, I click with, I will, yeah. I'll be good friends and I can help them, sure. Yes, because Sydney's a whole lot younger, as you see, than 87. You know, age is really just a number, everybody. Yeah. And the older a man gets, the more valuable he is. Yes, yeah, exactly. The sure. more he but can that, provide right. and everything. And he has greater knowledge. That's right, and you wisdom. Know, and, and wisdom, true, yeah, sure. Yeah, this guy's got Absolutely. a lot of wisdom. I'm going to name the guest house after his ex-wife and my mother. Because these were two women who went out of their way to help other people. Oh, yeah. I'd, I'd come home sometimes, yeah. sitting, it'd be a whole other family yeah. in my house. And my mother didn't have not a, a, a second job. Right. She didn't have any more money. Yeah. yeah. She was taking care of 17 people at one time, just herself. Well, I mean, um, my dad and my mother separated when I was like 16 years of age in high school. Yeah. And the reason why he separated from my mom was because my mom would be taking the neighborhood kids to live, but when they come, they don't leave. Yeah. And he felt the family was too big. Funny story, though. He came in, he got involved with a, another woman mm -hmm. and ended up having like nine kids. With the woman? With the woman. Wow. Yeah, and today we are all brothers and sisters. I, we don't... Look at each other's half brother or half sister. Right, yeah. We are right. as brothers we, and we sisters. We don't look at that. Yeah, either. we don't look at that stuff. Yeah, like that. step brother. And we all we all do very well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now let's look, look, before I, I give you the last word. You said your 
son at one time, one of your sons, one of my sons. was one of the general counsels for Major League Yeah, Baseball. that's my eldest son. He's, he's a lawyer. He's a lawyer. That's correct. Yeah. He um, did his law at UCLA School of Law. He was in the, he was in the top three of the graduation class. Yeah. And he started well. He started working for a private firm in California, and one of his first one of his first clients he had. Um, to, rep to, to represent was, um, oh boy, I forgot her name now, but was yeah. a movie star. Yeah. And he won that case and they opened a bottle of champagne and all that stuff and had fun. So that started? That started him. Yes, good. And, and then he, he, later on he, he was a, a, law, a law professor over at Stanford University. Oh, wow. and, at, and while he was at Stanford, one, I think it was the dean of the school who knew the, the commission of baseball then, and the guy called up, asked him, telling him, well, I'd like to get a minority guy who is a go-get lawyer. And the guy said, well, don't look any further. I got a guy right here. Yeah. And that's how my yes, son got into that. that. Yeah. So but he I, became the general counsel for Major League Baseball. Oh, yeah. wow. I know that your son hasn't given up on Western women. Oh, no. No, he, no, he's got no. a beautiful woman now. Oh, yeah, he's got, he, again, he's, he's had two marriages, yeah. and he's going to have a third beautiful yeah. woman. Yes, and they're going to get married in June, but they're yeah. going go to to, um, they're gonna go to Maui yeah. in Hawaii yeah. to get married. Well, he's better than me, guys. I've given up on them Western <laughs> women. They too much for me, shit. You can't do enough for them. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know they're demanding. I know they're demanding. And yeah. now, but you see, the problem with Western women now, since the woman's lib era, in my opinion, I'm talking yeah. about, is that um, things have gotten to the point whereby men are afraid to approach them. Absolutely. Because you do, you're not sure if they will consider that approach an assault or whatever. I mean, I remember back in the 60s and 70s in the, in the workplace, men and women flirted together without any problems. Now, all of a sudden, some of these women, 40 years later, are looking yeah. at that and saying, well, you assaulted me back then because you were in a higher job level than I was. Yeah. And I, you know, I look at Bill Cosby's case, for instance. That's yeah. kind of what happened. That drives me nuts. Because yeah. back then, it was accepted. Yeah. Men and women flirted in the workplace, whether you married or single That's or not. Right. That's what happened there. That's right. That's the fact. So what's a... Give me your favorite pickup line. My pickup line? Your I don't have line. any. I created right on the spot. Yeah, but like... like what, when what you see you what happened, I kind of use my ability to, to write songs and create yeah. songs and lines. And I would just use it like the other night. I was up in, in Batayan Island. I was there, and the, the, I saw the, on, the, on, the, on the drink list, wine list, on, on the drink list, yeah. there was something called Sex on the Beach. Sex so on the beach. Let me yeah. order that. Mm -hmm. The bartender came over to me, and she, I told her, I want Sex on the Beach. Well, I don't know how to make Sex on the Beach. What do you mean you don't know how to make Sex What do what you have to learn about having Sex on the Beach? She said, but I can make you a special drink. She did. And when she came back, I said, could I have your number? She said, when you're married, I said, no, I'm not. She said, you have a girlfriend? I said, no, I don't. And she said, well, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll give it to you. She came back later and gave me her number as if she'd given me a, a check at the bill. Yeah, the bill, the bill. Yeah. 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 And I have the wow. number. I haven't called her, but I have the number. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Gibson, for your time. And because I know you're busy, man. Well, I'm going to take, we're going to the mountains. Maybe yeah. if not tomorrow, maybe the, the next Wednesday. day. I know you sure. got guests coming. Uh, yes, yeah, swim. guests coming to so we'll swimming. Right. Yes, yeah. I'm gonna sure. give you the last word. Give something to the new man or woman who's thinking about coming over here to the Philippines. Or uh, anything, any a life lesson, well, whatever you want to do, take yes. us out of here. It, 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 the thing is, well, if you're gonna come to the Philippines and your and the primary purpose is to meet a woman, I think that's that's kind of short short sighted. Because there are many things that the Philippines offers beside the women. The women are there and that will come, I think. It may not come the first day or first week you get here, but eventually it will come. But I think there should be a greater purpose than just coming to meet women. Yeah. yeah. I couldn't say it any better, guys. But thank you so much for stopping by. 
If you're in America, it's late before you let your head hit the pillow. Please find somebody to help. But if you don't want them late grocery runs, beer runs, weed runs, is weed legal in Washington, D.C.? No. Yes, it is now because the, the I mean, the, they say medicinal. Yeah. The, the, you know. But I mean, yeah. the, the, what you call the, what I call the underground yeah. is making more money than the, than the office, oh, than the places okay. that are selling it yeah. legally. Yeah, that's kind of crazy because that's where the government is and they, they're oh, legalizing yeah. it all over yeah. the, yeah, the world. Sure. Well, not, yeah. Or if you're getting off second shift or you're on your lunch break. You see somebody out in the street or wherever you see them, buy them something to eat, buy them something to drink, give them a few dollars. If you're in the Philippines, there's no excuse not to help somebody. You've seen the poverty here, Sid. Yes, I right? have. Right? It's not a day goes by that I don't help somebody. We had our electronic community pantry drawing today. We're going to have later on the 1,000 peso pandemic giveaway drawing. We've yes. done every week since the pandemic yes, started yes, yeah. to help Filipinos struggle yeah. with the lockdown, sure. people out of work, businesses aren't operating at 100%. Because if I don't know anything else, I know this one thing for sure, we help other people, we help ourselves. Take care, stay safe, stay COVID-free. I'll see you next time. Thank you, Calvin. No, you're welcome.